so far when looking at the book of Habakkuk, we have looked at chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And now we're going to go on to look at verses 3 and 4. We should look at them together. But to recap, what we've read so far is from verse 1 of chapter 1. The oracle, or the burden, which Habakkuk the prophet saw. How long, O Lord, will I call for help, and you will not hear? I cry out to you, violence, yet you do not save. And then verse 3 and 4. Why do you make me see iniquity, and cause me to look on wickedness? Yes, destruction and violence are before me. Strife exists, <clears throat> and contention arises. Therefore the law is ignored, and justice is never upheld. For the wicked surround the righteous, therefore justice comes out perverted. In the last message we looked at that one word violence in verse 2, but I didn't develop it at all. It was just, I had to look at it because it was in verse 2, and we looked at verse 2 in that message. Now there are other concepts, other destructive elements present in the society in which Habakkuk lived. They're listed here, I've just read them to you. They are the nasties. We have violence, uh, iniquity, wickedness, uh, destruction and violence, strife, contention, the law is uh, ignored, uh, there is no justice, the justice is not upheld, the wicked surround the righteous and justice comes out perverted. Now, one of the principles which I often talk about <clears throat> is that human nature has not changed throughout all the ages. And I do trust that you can readily agree with me here, because when, I, when we look at these certain nasties, as I call them, certain elements of the human nature, we can, can we not, we can readily agree that we see all these events and occurrences and all these types of behaviour, we see them going on today in the year 2021. <clears throat> and when we study history, we can see that the, this type of behaviour has gone on throughout all the ages when we read the history books. And one of the history books is this book, Book of Books. It's a library of 66 books, isn't it? The Holy Bible. It is a book of history. It does contain history. Although primarily it's not a book of history, but it contains history. It, it, it's a book which contains much more than that, and I've spoken about that in the past, and maybe I'll come back to that <clears throat> at some future point. But we see these destructive elements, these see, we see these, these traits of human behaviour in our society now, wherever in the world we live. We only have to read... <clears throat> something look on the internet we have to just turn on the television screens read the newspapers if we do that anymore in this uh, <laughs> techno age in which we live we don't tend to read newspapers anymore but we look online for world events and we see these sort of things going on all the time this is why Hab Habakkuk was calling out we've seen in verse 2 he was crying out and he was saying to the Lord why is it that I've got to face all this? How long um, will it be before you do something, Lord? Please come and do something. I'm crying out to you. Why is it that I have to look upon all this, all these goings on around me, which distress me? They are anti-God types of behaviour. And again, yes, bang up to date in our 21st century world, we have so much behaviour that is anti-God and it is becoming more prevalent to, to think and to act and behave in a cer certain ways which are against the Holy Scriptures, which are offensive to Almighty God. Iniquity, court, look upon wickedness, destruction and violence are before me. Strife exists and contention arises. Well, there's much strife. You only have to put uh, two people in, in, in together. And before very long, there is some sort of disagreement which will occur uh, and some angst, 
some strife, some contention, some argument which will develop. It frequently doesn't take very long indeed for that to happen. And that's a result of the fallen human nature to which we are were all subject when we were born. I nearly said to which we are all subject, but Christians are not subject to that power anymore which the fallen human nature has because we've been released from the power that used to hold us in, in some sort of grip to behave as we're reading here. Christians have been set free. Christians have been rescued, have been delivered from the power, ultimately the power of the devil and the demonic realm. We have been set free. Yes, we still behave badly sometimes. We still sin in all its various forms, but we do not have to. There is no compulsion any longer for Christians to act in the ways in which we have been reading here in verses 3 and 4 of chapter 1 of Habakkuk. We are free in Christ. We're no longer slaves of the devil. We are bond servants to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are not driven anymore by the same driving force which was driving these people and which drives so many people in our society today. We do not have to engage in this sort of behaviour. If we do, it's sinful. Uh, and if we do, we need to repent of that. We need to understand it's wrong. We need to ask for the, the help of Almighty God to come and give us, by his spirit, to give us strength in our inner person, self-control being part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, so that we do not engage in these sorts of activities. Strife and contention exists. Verse 4, therefore the law is ignored, the Torah. The law which Almighty God gave, Torah, or instruction really, teaching, Torah is much more than law, it's instruction, it's teaching, it's a way of living which Almighty God gave to his people uh, so that they would live according to his ways. And if they did, they would be better off, and if they did not, they would be worse off. Therefore the law, the Torah, is ignored and justice is never upheld. And at the end of verse 4 it says, therefore justice comes out perverted. For many years I practised in England in the criminal law system. And one of um, quite a serious offence is uh, perverting the course of justice or attempting to pervert the course of justice. And it was, I'm, I'm a bit rusty now, I've been out of the legal system for some time, but it used to be treated in a most serious way, and not inevitably, but nearly always, a person who was found guilty, or pleaded guilty, or was found guilty, to the offence of attempting to pervert the course of justice, or pervert the course of justice, nearly always that person would receive a, a, a term of custody, a prison sentence. That was the seriousness with which the law, and I dare say it still does, but I'm a bit out of touch, that was the seriousness with which the uh, legal system treated somebody who would try to twist the legal system to his or her advantage, uh, to try and twist the legal system in order to be uh, acquitted, found not guilty of something which, of which he or she was guilty. Serious matter. Verse 4, what I haven't mentioned here, I skipped over part of it. For the wicked surround the righteous. I don't suppose here that Habakkuk was talking about literally wicked people standing in a circle around somebody or some people who were righteous. It's not a physical, literal surrounding. But it was a, it was a picture of people who were not righteous, people who were badly behaved, people who were wicked, exercising their power and some authority over those people who wanted to act in a righteous sort of manner. People wanted to act, some people would, would have wanted to act properly, some people would have wanted to behave in a way whereby they were obeying the Torah, they were using honest scales in commerce, 
their, they were trying to be honest in their dealings, their word would have been their bond, and they were being taken advantage of by dishonest people. They were being bullied, they were being tricked and conned, and they were being, not literally, but they were being pushed around. So this is a picture here of all the ills, or most of the ills, the worst aspects of the society in which Habakkuk lived. Principle, what was going on then, two, two and a half thousand years ago, 2,600 years ago approximately, what was going on then goes on today. And is it any wonder that many people, particularly Christians, look at the world around them and they say, what is going on here? Why are people acting in such an un ungodly manner? Why are they rejecting the one who can save them and who can rescue them? Well, Christians are wondering, why will people not turn to, to, to Jesus Christ, who can forgive them for their sins, who can give them a new start, a freshness, with Jesus Christ, people can begin again. They can put the past behind them. They can be healed of their inner turmoil. They can be released from the grip of the powers of the devil and his demonic realm, which drive them to act in this badly behaved way. Christians wonder, why is this all going on? And when Christians act in such a way, well, again, that's not new. Habakkuk did this all those centuries ago. So Habakkuk, as I mentioned, I believe in the first message, he was slightly different from uh, other prophets in that his discourse, his conversation was with God. And he was expecting, he wanted Almighty God to reply. And in the next message, as we go through into verse 5 onwards of chapter 1, we shall see indeed how the Lord God did respond to Habakkuk.